Today's video is going to focus on Sigmund Freud's psychosexual theory of development. By now, if you've been watching this series, you probably know when it comes to Freud, you know it's going to be an interesting conversation. Well, this video is not going to be any different. Freud was hugely influential in psychology throughout much of the first half of the 20th century. Although many of his theories helped shape psychology into becoming the science it is today, most of them are not really present in modern day psychology. Really, even the parts that are have been changed quite a lot from Freud's day. That being said, it's still important to learn about Freud and his important contributions to the field. His psychosexual theory of development is a good example of this. Although it isn't necessarily the widest regarded, and most important of the many theories of development, it is still relevant and helps us to better understand how we view growth. Now, since we're talking about Freud, it's important to remember that he is most associated with the psychoanalytical perspective in psychology. This perspective is really focused on the idea that there are aspects of who we are that we're not really fully aware of. They believed that a part of our psychology was rooted in the unconscious mind. These are the things that we're not really in control of and usually aren't even aware of, yet they can still influence us. According to Freud, a great example of an unconscious instinct that encouraged us to grow and develop was a need to fulfill pleasureful urges. He called this the libido, and he believed that everyone had it. He also believed the libido was what helped motivate us to develop psychologically. Now, this seems like a good point to let everyone know a lot of things with Freud dealt with sex. He believed sexual desires, unfulfilled urges, and conflicts could lead to all sorts of psychological problems. The libido is what will become the sexual motivation, but libido is much larger than that. Early in our lives, it also isn't necessarily sexual in nature. I mean, after all, you can experience physical pleasure without it necessarily being sexual. Freud believed that throughout our childhood, our libido was focused on certain behaviors in specific parts of our body. As this focus shifted and changed, it can lead to conflicts and tensions that can arise as a child learns to deal with these urges. Freud identified five stages of development that occur from birth through to adolescence. So his theory is discontinuous in nature, which means that there are clear stages of development and that a child must go through each stage successfully. Each of these stages corresponds to a certain focus for a child's developing libido. The first stage of Freud's theory is known as the oral stage, and this largely corresponds to about the first year of life. Infants derive pleasure by focusing on their mouths. This can involve things like receiving nourishment by being breastfed and later getting solid food, but it can also be more explorative in nature. If you've ever seen an infant, they tend to just put a lot of different things in their mouths, even things they can't eat. It's almost like their way of exploring and interacting with things around them. As we grow older and enter toddlerhood, we transition into the anal stage. The main physical focus of a child's attention is learning to control their bathroom behaviors and starting to become potty trained. As toddlers grow and become preschoolers about from age three to age six, they enter into the phallic stage. Freud believed that this was the stage that boys and girls start to become more aware of being boys and girls and begin to explore their own erogenous zones. I really want to make a point of saying that even though this may mean boys are exploring their boy parts and girls are exploring their girl parts, it isn't necessarily sexual in nature. It's more of a curiosity than anything else. In fact, this can even lead to some really shocking, stressful moments for new parents when they hear that their kindergartner exposed themselves to classmates in school. Freud believed children in the phallic stage also tended to be more attached to the opposite sex parent. 
So little girls would be more attached to their fathers and little boys would be more attached to their mothers. These periods of becoming more attached to the opposite sex parent are called the Oedipus complex for boys and the Electra complex for girls. Freud believed that they may even have been somewhat like early forms of sexual interest. Yeah, you heard me right. Leave it to Freud to make things weird and talk about something like incest. Of course, his ideas are just that, his ideas. They weren't necessarily rooted in any type of research or experimentation and consequently isn't really part of psychology today. It does seem though like most children in this stage do tend to bond more with the parent of the opposite sex. There is some research that has been done on this and some people really do think that ideas of gender identity and maybe even sexual orientation starts to develop in this stage. However, it's important to note that there may be need to have a distinction here between sex and gender. After all, just because a person belongs to one sex, male or female, doesn't necessarily mean they identify with the corresponding gender. This may especially play a role with children raised by same-sex parents. This identification with opposite sex parent doesn't last forever either. Typically, by the time a child starts to go into school by about six years of age, they begin to spend more time with friends that are the same sex. They also may start to identify more and more with the same sex parent. Freud called this stage latency. The idea of latency is that children have now gone through these periods of managing their physical urges in earlier stages and now focus more on other things. Usually this means things like school, friends, and hobbies. Social skills and relationships start to become more important to them. It's called latency because the idea was that a child's libido sort of goes into hibernation. It isn't as strong during this period. However, all of this changes when a child enters into puberty and the libido comes front and center as it starts to shift and become more sexual in nature. This stage is known as the genital stage of development and lasts pretty much throughout our lives, at least according to Freud. Now, I realize that some things that Freud believed may seem a little odd, maybe even a little icky. I get it. But there are some interesting things about Freud's theory that I wanted to talk about. Remember at the start of the video, I mentioned that the key to Freud's theory was how a child goes through the stages and how that can lead to conflicts and tensions that can influence their growth. Well, all of us go through these stages, but not all of us go through them necessarily the same way. In each stage, we have a physical focus for our urges and how we learn how to manage them and what we associate with them definitely can influence us. For example, Freud believed that infants that were overindulged during the oral stage could lead to children becoming orally fixated. So let's say a mother feeds her infant more than the infant needs because when the child is being fed, they aren't as fussy or irritable. Freud would argue that the infant may start to associate fulfilling the urge of oral pleasure with emotional regulation. This could lead to things like a child and later an adult engaging in problematic behaviors. Maybe they will bite their nails, overeat, or as adults even do things like smoke or drink excessively. During the anal stage, a child is learning how to control their bodies and manage the important hygienic task of using the bathroom. Freud believed that if caregivers were overly strict during this period, the children could become anal retentive, which means that they feel a lot of shame and embarrassment. Freud thought these children would become overly strict and rigid themselves and even lead to them having what we today would call OCD. The opposite could also cause problems. Freud thought that caregivers that weren't that involved in the process of potty training could cause their children to become sloppy and disorganized. One thing I think that is pretty interesting is that for a really long time, I didn't really give much weight to Freud's psychosexual theory. It seemed a little gross and really a lot of what Freud said were mostly just his beliefs. To this day, a lot of his theory can't really be proven or even tested because there are more opinions and beliefs than they are actual facts. This is also one of the reasons why many people criticize his theory as even being a little sexist and overly preoccupied 
with the sexual aspects of psychology. However, this changed a few years ago when I had a student want to speak with me after a class. After everyone else left, the student started to tell me how she had been trying to potty train her three-year-old daughter and that it was very frustrating. Now, I don't give any personal advice to students and I'm not even qualified to give any type of counseling service. I told this student all of that, but during our conversation, she started to mention how she thought her daughter was refusing to use the potty because she didn't like her and was refusing to do it in order to get even with her mother. Now, think for a second. Whether you like Freud's theory or not, do you think that having a mother that believes you are purposely not going to the bathroom just to spite her may be part of a larger problem at play? Do you think this child and her mother may have some issues down the road? My guess is absolutely yes, they will. I mean, if you can't even get through an ordeal like teaching your child to use the potty without making assumptions about your child being vindictive, it doesn't look good. How about the child associating something as routine as going to the bathroom with these types of emotional issues? This also ties into Freud's larger beliefs about the unconscious mind because this young girl likely isn't going to remember how she was potty trained. After all, I don't remember this time in my life and I'm pretty sure most people watching this don't either. But maybe it does influence us. Please don't think I'm saying that I agree 100% with Freud's theory, just some things to think about. It would be fun too if you want to share your thoughts, so maybe leave a comment below and tell me what you think about Freud's theory. I'm sure there'll be some really interesting comments, so I can't wait to start reading them. Thanks for watching, everybody.